Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. This is going to be my Arrow Wildcat video. If you didn't see, they just cast J.R. Ramirez as Ted Grant. That's Wildcat's name in real life. So I'm going to explain his comic book origins as well as how the show might change it just a little bit. He hasn't been in the comics recently, but he was a huge part of Justice Society. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff that just happened in the DC Universe too. They just cast Manhunter, not Martian Manhunter, the Mark Shaw Manhunter. They announced nine new DC movies after Batman vs Superman. And I've got to name a winner in my Comic-Con giveaway, my Arrow Comic-Con giveaway. So I'll do all that stuff after Wildcat. If you're just finding me for the first time, I do Arrow and Flash videos every week. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. So, Ted Grant origin story, let's go. Traveling back in time, he debuted in 1942 as a professional boxer. He grew up super poor, but his father taught him to be an animal of sorts in the ring. But in order to earn extra money to live, he had to get a job on the loading docks. One night he saw someone getting ambushed, he beat the shit out of the attackers, and the person that he saved turned out to be a retired prize fighter. Thus began his pro boxing career, that person that he saved backed him for the heavyweight title. That's where his name Wildcat came from, he was just such an animal in the ring. He was really big, really fast, and really tough. Eventually a local mobster fixed one of his matches, then framed him for it. After he cleared his name, he took up the name Wildcat full time as a superhero alias, and started fighting crime. So he got really inspired by the original Green Lantern, Alan Scott, and took up crime fighting. He was a minor member of the Justice Society for a while, and later issues of the comic, like later whenever Jeff Johns took over, they changed his backstory. He does have some strange mystical powers. The Dark Lord Mordu said that Wildcat has nine lives, like he can die and come back nine times. And as long as all those deaths don't happen too close together, the lives will refresh and he'll always have nine lives. So I totally don't think that Arrow's going to do that. I think they're just going to make him really tough. They're going to make him like as tough as a Mirakuru soldier. Jeff Johns made him one of the central Justice Society characters whenever he started writing the comic back in the early 2000s. That was actually one of his first big comic runs. It was before he brought back Barry Allen and Flash Rebirth. So you can think of JSA as being like a Jeff Johns origin story. At least the origins of his work at DC Comics. So whenever they changed the Ted Grant backstory during that comic run, they just made him a retired prize fighter that trained like all the big Justice Society and Justice League A-listers. He did have a son that he never knew about that showed up. His name was Tommy Bronson. And in a twist on the Wildcat legacy, the son ended up being a werecat. So he could transform into like a full-on cat. That was during a whole big Vandal Savage storyline. So if you want to read it, it's really awesome. It's all Jeff Johns stuff. J.R. Ramirez, the actor that they cast, looks about old enough to be a retired pro boxer, so they might go with a modified origin story for the TV show. They posted pictures from the set of Oliver in a boxing ring, so either Oliver's going to meet him during his final fight, or he's already going to be a retired boxer just working at that boxing ring. Either way, I think the most exciting tease is that Oliver is going to get some more fighting skills from Wildcat. I mean, that's Wildcat's biggest thing, being the guy who taught all the big superheroes how to fight. Or at least the ones that weren't aliens. Superman does not need to be a nimble fighter. He's indestructible and he has super speed. He just has to blow really hard and people will go down. There was a really fun Batman vs Wildcat storyline that you guys should totally check out too. I think Arrow's going to age him down just a little bit. In the comics he comes off as a little bit of an old man. Or at least he thinks of himself as being way past his prime. His JSA team was Alan Scott, Jay Garrick, a lot of the classic Golden Age heroes. So whenever Jeff Johns took over the comic, part of the plot was them reforming the team. Like they had been retired for a while. It was all in the post-Infinite Crisis stuff, if any of you guys read that storyline. If you guys remember, Hawkman was another big Justice Society character. Michael Shanks from Stargate played him on Smallville. But there are a whole bunch of other characters Eric could tease this season and then bring on in the future. Like other Justice Society characters. Dr. Fate was another big team member of Wildcats. They teased him in the Constantine pilot, like you just saw the Helmet of Fate, but Smallville also did their version of the character whenever they did their Justice Society arc. Most of the supers that come on Arrow don't really stick around. I know Black Canary is back for three episodes, but after that she's gone again to make room for the Ray Palmer Adam and Katana. But if you really want to see some other J.R. Ramirez stuff, you should watch the Star show, it's called Power. That's mostly about a drug lord trying to go legit, so I guess there's some loose ties with the origins of the original Wildcat. The producers did say that the Ted Grant character would be spending most of his time on the show with Laurel. Since she's working with the DA, it's probably going to have something to do with organized crime. So he might just end up helping her try to take down a mob boss and then run into Arrow while he's out doing that, and they might end up working together. 
It sounds like he's not going to be as close with Team Arrow as, say, Ray Palmer is going to be. But if you remember during the Season 2 finale, there were like a bunch of different groups of people doing different things. Like Quentin and Laurel with the police, Katie Lotz jumping from area to area with the League of Assassins, and Roy was with Thea till she split, and then some of them met up at the end for that big street fight in the tunnel. So we could go most of the season without Wildcat being on Team Arrow. They haven't even said which episode he's going to debut in, but it's definitely going to be the first half of the season. When we started thinking about how Team Arrow is growing, there was this weird line last season that I keep thinking about. Oliver talked about just getting back to the core team, like the Holy Trinity, but now we have Roy and he's in his full costume and he's like in full on sidekick mode. So I think we're going to see a couple extra people join the team in the first half of the season. No word on when Katana is going to show up, but Stephen Amell was teasing his costume. Someone was asking him if he's going to get an upgraded Arrow costume, and he said that things would be added to it. So. He's still going to have the leather pants and the jacket. He's probably just going to get some more tech, you know, maybe from Ray Palmer, who's supposed to be a tech genius. So now moving on to other new characters. Manhunter, the Mark Shaw Manhunter, is coming on the show. If you're not familiar with that character, he was part of the Suicide Squad, and that's probably how Arrow's going to use him. He's going to be part of the Diggle, Lila, Amanda Waller Suicide Squad stuff happening this year. He's just going to be featured in those episodes, so it's going to be a very minor role. They made him sound like a little bit of a villain, like he and Diggle are going to cross paths, so that doesn't sound like it's going to be very friendly. But now, moving on to those other DC movies they just announced. So what happened was, is Warner Brothers announced dates for nine additional superhero movies after Batman vs. Superman. No names, just dates. So I'm going to do a separate video for what those might be. Be sure to subscribe to get it. I'll try and post it in the next couple of days. But really, it's going to start with the easy stuff, like Man of Steel 2, a new solo Batfleck movie, Justice League sequel, and then a sequel to the Batman vs. Superman movie. Maybe Wonder Woman if Justice League does okay. You get the idea. The real thing that I want to talk about is like what those other four or five movies might be because those are total mysteries. Now it's time to crown a winner in the Comic Con giveaway. Congrats to T-Real. You win an Oliver Funko Pop figure. I'll be messaging on your channel for details. So moving on, big reminders about when all these shows are starting. So first off, Flash starts Tuesday, October 7th. Arrow is going to be the next day on October 8th. So if you're international, just check your local listings. If you've watched Arrow in the past, that's the same channel that The Flash is going to be on. And iTunes started selling season passes for Arrow Season 2 last year around September 13th. So they'll probably do the same thing this year. So you will be able to buy season passes for Arrow Season 3 in The Flash, but not for another month or so. I'll be posting my videos as things happen, but you can always watch them later if you don't watch the episodes right away. As a measure of last resort, the CW also streams episodes a week after they are on TV, so you have to wait like a whole week behind everyone else, but if you absolutely have to, you can watch them there too. And big congratulations, because you guys really stepped up. I told you guys I'd post reviews for Constantine and Gotham if my last Arrow video got like 2,000 likes, and you totally did it. I think it got like three or 4,000 likes, so I'll be posting those videos in the next week. So what I'm going to do is post the Constantine review first, and then I'll post the Gotham review. So don't worry, there'll be big spoiler warnings. But right now, click here to learn all about Ra's al Ghul coming to Arrow. Yes, I know it's crazy that it's happening. And click here to learn all about Captain Cold coming to The Flash. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. High fives.